Welcome to the April 28th edition of the Chaos Common Metrics Working Group meeting. We have we have a relatively light agenda, so um, we'll see if there's other stuff that people want to add. Um, just add it. Don't add it under anything else. Just add it as a main item, whoever anonymous bat is. <laughs> anonymous bat is the source of COVID, so they're not revealing who they that are. That would be me. <laughs> I knew it. That NIH Research Center is actually a COVID development site in Omaha. <laughs> And other conspiracy theories that I can just make up <laughs> like that. Wait, I didn't mean to shut someone down. Go ahead and add it. I I, I forgot what I was doing, but I, I remember here. Sorry. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> oh. so this is a collaborative agenda. We just we just add things. Um Are you sitting outside where there are birds, Matt? I have my door open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can hear birds. Uh, Sean looks like he's in a cave. My, my so bunker. I'm guessing it's, a, it's not you. It's a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have a large screen door I could open, but right now the greet the pollen that's on my car every morning is so thick that uh, I dare not open anything. But yeah. Um. Okay. Well, let's let's just start. So we have some action items from the previous meeting. Um, Matt was going to update the template with a checkbox about pointing to the markdown file rather than the Google Doc. Did that happen? What was I going to do? Uh, that's the template for reviewing. Oh, I did that. OK. Yep. Cool. Matt does so many things, he forgets what he does. I... <laughs> That one was uh, slightly ambiguously worded, I will admit, um, <laughs> <laughs> as the person who probably typed that. Um, yeah. Sean assigned to get through the list of release metrics I to didn't. determine next step. I, I, failed, I failed to account for the fact that I was gone all last week in my, my planning <laughs> for that. So I will, I will no have that. I've got we'll, we'll talk um, about that again when we get to that agenda item. Um, I will have, I will have a, I will have a, I will have that done prior to the next meeting, and I'll probably have it done this week yet. Okay. And Matt, you're going to add a drop down option on the spreadsheet for under revision. I have not done that. Okay. I'm going to bring that action item up. Okay. No. No, my failure to review the metrics, I'm, I'm looking bad right now. So. Um, I'll get on that. And then Vinod was going to look at waiting for reviewer action, but I don't, I don't see him here. So we might pump that one. We'll just move that action item up. Whoops. I can actually do my action item probably pretty quickly right here. Adding drop down labels is pretty easy. Okay. We have. Oh, good. Vinod's joined us. Um, we have no open pull requests and no new issues since we met last time. Are there any of these issues that anyone wants to discuss in this meeting? Most of them are pretty old. Yeah, I don't need to discuss any one in particular. Okay. Just we have... Um, the in progress, we, we do also track them in the spreadsheet, I think. And so I just wonder, do we keep them open here? Do we keep them open in both places? It does seem to be pretty normal practice to keep them open in both places, the issue list here and the yeah. spreadsheet. But I'm good with having them in both places because I think okay. it helps people find it helps people find them, I think. Okay. And I think I've gone through and tried to make sure that they're all the same so that I mean, we can take a look, but those five are in the spreadsheet. Okay, perfect. Um, and then uh, reviewing old metrics and the spreadsheet. So there's some notes. notes. Sorry, there's some notes dropped in here. It's a good way to include new participants. Mm -hmm. Mark new issues with good first issue, help wanted, and revisiting metric, which is a fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah. Credit the DEI working group for that. 
Nice. And on that um, first comment, it was basically just we sometimes the like what is proposed to be edited is really pretty simple. It's mm -hmm. like a list is poorly formatted or, uh, you know, like a Likert scale goes one to five, but we use one to X, you know what I mean? So they're usually pretty easy mm -hmm. things to fix. And so we put that in the newcomer channel that DEI has these issues. And if you want to participate, that'd be great. And we had a couple of people who expressed interest in participating. Cool. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, that does sound like a good way to get new participants involved, for sure. And it made me think maybe we want to, maybe this isn't for common, but continue to use that newcomer channel to point to places for people mm -hmm. to participate. Because it seems like even if we mark things in the issues with like help wanted or good first issue, mm -hmm. people don't see them. They have a tendency of sitting in the repository and it might be useful to use that channel to point people to our issues. I think that's a good idea. Is there anything we want to talk about specifically on reviewing the old metrics? It sounds like we haven't made a, we haven't gone through the, the sweep of them. I think we had a, a good discussion in DEI yesterday where, and, and Matt, the Matt's um, implementation of the issues, I, I think it was pretty clear what are the things that might require some discussion and what are the things that are probably pretty easy fixes. The checklist is very helpful. And we kind of agreed that at the point at which we're substantially revising the language and the metric, that's when we would jump to the Google Doc and do a collaborative process. But it seems that more than 50% of these changes are going to be like minor pull request e kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Matt. No, that was good. And thanks for that. Cool. Um, let's tackle issue labels across working groups next. Just going to rearrange things on the agenda on the fly. So I'm going to ask a technical question just to refresh my memory. We can create issue labels at the organization level, and then all the working groups would inherit those projects like Augur or more like sorting hat that want to use a different set of labels and can just overwrite that with their own file in that repository is that right i don't know you i think you were going to kind of look at this yeah i okay all right i i did look at this and that does seem to be the case because oh, there you've you. implemented you've implemented some labels in the dot github at the at no the i level. have not no nope. mm -hmm. okay no, no I have, I've only done issues with I've, yeah. like pre-assigned issue labels, but not. I want I want to mention one thing, and I don't know. So so I don't know what we did, but we did implement something. Um, we put the labels in a YAML file, and some of us had been creating labels through the GitHub user interface, and for the CNCF contributor strategy tag, we lost all of our labels. Um, through something in an automation process. Now, I don't know that they were, um, I don't know if we were doing it through the .github um, repo or um, .github directory, or if we were doing some other kind of automation. Like I know we've got some stuff set up with like GitHub Actions and things. So it yeah. might not be the same thing, but I would, before before we implement something, let's look at possible side effects for the existing labels that were created through the interface. Just in so case. the dot I knew I do know that the you can run the GitHub actions that's usually in the dot GitHub repository. So like when you define actions, like how my GitHub actions run automatically is just there in the GitHub dot GitHub repo under. A repository. But my, my point is that um, before, we, 
before we implement it, let's make sure that there aren't any side effects that are going to wipe out all of our labels because we did lose almost all of our labels. That's the entire repo. Were you able to um, revert that? Or no. Because you were able we had to, to manually out. remember what our labels were and reapply them. Wow. Yeah. Now it was just one repo and the contributor strategy tag is a fairly small repo. But if we accidentally do something that wipes out all of our labels across the entire chaos org, um, that's going to suck. Now, I don't know what, I don't remember what we did because I wasn't involved and um, I didn't pay all that much attention aside from remembering that we did something bad. When I was playing, Sean, just when I was playing around with .github, like I just made my own org and yeah. did all the testing in there. Yeah, and I did the same. I did the. I I believe I did this, and I'm just looking for where okay. I'm right now okay. while we're talking. It might be something totally different. I'm just just a caution. And I I will say, Sean, like for doing the issue templates, which might be kind of similar. I mean, I just put them into each working group manually. Oh. So it instead of doing it, like worrying about some push or pull. Yeah. So it's a dot. It's a dot. Yeah. You have a dot github repo inside of each or a, a directory inside of each mm -hmm. org. Yep. Okay. That makes and that sense. was really the easiest way because mm -hmm. the issue templates were really only applicable to the working groups because they were about revising metrics or releasing metrics. Mm -hmm. And the same might hold true for issues that they might only be applicable to really the five working groups. And at that point, it's really just easier, maybe just to copy the, the folder. From working, yeah. from working group. Fair. Is this the last topic on the agenda? So I'm looking for it. Uh, no, on. actually, okay. I skipped over um, time waiting for reviewer action um, because Finod, you said you were gonna you were gonna look at that one. I know that when we go through the metrics, that takes some time. And so I wanted to just hit all the rest of the items before we talk about that. So you wanna give us an update on where you are with that? Yep, I took a look at it and it's ready for you all to review. And uh, maybe if we are missing like graphs or images or data from Augur or Grimoire lab, which I don't have, so. Okay. So how do we want to do this? Do people want to take just a minute or two to read through it? Um, do, do we want to talk through it? I would suggest like just read through it. Does it make sense? Or Because it's just a different angle of a submitter action. It's just a flip of a coin. So I made it in that way. It just reads as a flip of a coin. OK.
In answer to your question, Vinod, synonyms are for the uh, the metric itself, not for not for any uh, terms that may be in the uh, in the document. Okay. Uh, I ask this because the other metric for which uh, this is an opposite, like another angle time uh, waiting for a submitter action, we have synonym for the submitter rather than uh, the entire metric. Was that a new was that a new metric this round? Yes, yes, that is ready for the release. We were just uh, waiting for the release period. So maybe we have to add that in. That's case. But it hasn't, the other metric hasn't entered the review period, so we can also change it. Mm, yeah, yep. yeah, we okay. can also change it. So the, so the, um, the answer for uh, how I did the labels is you can create default labels at the org level, and they will be the labels anytime um, you create a new org, but they won't change anything about the labels on an existing org, um, which is good, I think. You're making me context shift. I'm reading a... Sorry, let you just come back to me when their time is right. I'm sorry. Are there any of these other comments that we want to talk about or that Vino, do you have any questions about? Mm -hmm. uh, from, from this document, I would say it's not completely clear how time waiting for a reviewer action fits within the metric review cycle duration. So I think in the, in the description, we, we start to hint at it. Uh, but we aren't explicit. Do you have thoughts on it, like like for improving it? Uh, I am thinking about that right now. I just thought I would mention what was on my mind. Uh, okay. That's that's where I'm at in the in the paper right now. So that's where my cursor is at as well. I could use a hand kind of going through some of the filters. And in time waiting for reviewer action. Yeah. I'm having a hard time seeing some of them. Okay, so we, like for example, the first one, we could take a look at, we want to understand time waiting for reviewer action based on the number of people in a review. That, that makes sense to me. So I don't only want to see this if there are more than three people yes. or less than two. Yep. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then same with like the number of comments in a review. Right. You know, if we have a lot of comments, if we have very few comments. The next one, time duration for review comments following the review. Nope. Time duration for review confidence following the review. Um, I would maybe the simple way of saying that would be comment responsiveness and indicating yep. as measured in, you know, measured in hours from a comment being made to a comment being responded to. 
Yep. And that, maybe with a qualifier who, by a responder who is not a bot. Time duration. So, so, say, so how is that different from just the metric itself? Is it the response by the author? It's a specific type of action. So there it's so this is where I'm interested in knowing, okay, where I respond very quickly with a comment when someone so for example, I provide a review, which is a comment, and the the person submitting the pull request comes in, makes some changes, comments on my comments or responds to them. What is the response period for me as a maintainer after the, the potential contributor does all that? Because that's a signal of, okay, I went through all this effort to address the changes you requested. If I'm waiting five days, I maybe feel less good about that than if it's a day or two. So is it time waiting for reviewer? action following a change uh, to a following a change in response to an original an initial review or a prior review yep that was the main purpose yeah but we managed to make it really hard to understand <laughs> time waiting for reviewer action following a change um, Following, that, follow, I would say following, following, following a contributor change in response to the previous review. Like that? Yeah. I would put in response between change and two. Okay. Don, is that sound, does that sound sane? Well, then we could you get to oh, in response to the previous. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was on mute. I think that makes sense. Okay. Yep. Do, we, do we still want to link to the uh, change request? Yeah, probably. So I, I was just getting the text down. Yeah. So maybe we can say following the contributor change request, and then we can uh, link to that change request metric. So then how about the next one? Edits made to a change request. This is linked to the previous one, so. It seems. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, it seems similar, so. Oops. I'll move that into like I think both of these that I'm highlighting in yellow could go away. Yep, they based on, both based on this one. Yep. So... Date and time the change request was submitted. Okay, that makes sense. The size and type of the change request. Okay number of review cycles in a change request okay uh so we have a we have a metric which is review cycle duration uh and and when we when we look at all these together and and with the filters that we're adding here uh we're kind of all over the place uh so the review cycle duration, if we look at the description of the what review cycle duration is, uh, that one is the how long it takes for uh, changes to be made based on a review. And it says that at, when the changes are made, that begins a new review cycle. So there are, there are this is a subs, this is like a piece within the review cycle. Yes. So that was the main goal. Yeah. However, with these filters that you're adding, you're extending beyond review cycle because you're starting to talk about multiple review cycles. So if this is a piece within the review cycle, we when you start when you start talking about multiple review cycles, uh, mm -hmm. it becomes uh, problematic. 
Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, I was yep. seeing a review cycle as a subset of this, and I think that's backwards. But I was thinking yep. that a lot based on how we've defined these filters. So I think Kevin, you make a really, a really good point. So we currently have a metric for pull request review cycle, like with some responsiveness filters in it. Or and maybe maybe we should all revisit that metric and then come back and decide what we want this metric to be. Do we want this one to be a subset of review cycle? Yep, that was the initial goal when this metric got started. Like first was submitter uh, action, then in that discussion, this was evolved and we discussed that, okay, we have a, a duration, review cycle duration. And first the discussion was whether to have a time waiting or a duration, then we realized, no, this is a subset of that duration metric. Okay, so, so, so my understanding. Based on the question, it feels like, it feels like it's the opposite. It feels like time waiting, there would be multiple time waiting for reviewer actions within a review cycle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So review cycle would be a subset of the. Uh, sorry, time waiting for reviewer action would be a subset. Subset of, of a review cycle duration. Yeah. A component yeah. of it. Yeah. It's something yep. that it can occur one or more times within a full review cycle. Yes. And it is really, and at its base, what it is, is it's how much time does it take the reviewer to respond to any action by the submitter within the review cycle, within a review cycle. Then, so, then maybe we need to remove this filter if we want to keep it in that way, the third, uh, fourth filter we have, because fourth filter is like going back to the review cycle duration. Could we, for that fourth one, so, okay, so if this is a subset of the other, then yes. should we be explicit on the filters, like reviewer, um, involved, like, should we keep it specific to a review cycle? Is that what we're trying to do here? That's what they that's what they told us they want to do. Okay. I, at least that, that's what I'm hearing they want to do. Yep. So in the filters, then it would be like reviewer involved in a single review cycle. Yep. Number of people involved in a review cycle. Number of comments in a review cycle. Like that. I, I, mm, I'm I just, don't know. I, I'm not sure that's, that's what we want to do because it's not, because we're basically what we're doing here is redefining review cycle. Um, and I think that time waiting for reviewer action, I mean, these are a bunch of reviewers that might be involved in a, I mean, because time waiting for for a reviewer action is that one very specific thing. small thing that happens a whole bunch of times in a review cycle yeah. and happens a whole bunch of times in multiple review cycles. And I feel like we're confusing too many things in this metric right now. And the, mo the most important use of this one is probably actually to get time of first response of a review would be my guess. Like how, how long is that? How long until you get that first response by a reviewer when you submit a review that that would to me that would be the most important bit in here and it's not it's not coming through in the text don't we have that as a metric uh we have time to first response i think in issues uh i 
and I think there may be a time to first response in another uh, more abstract way as well. But I guess, I mean, looking at this, if you have three reviewers, if you have three reviewers and we're looking at time waiting for a for reviewer action, uh, are we are we looking for the time for each individual reviewer? What what I care about as a contributor is that if I get feedback and have changes requested and I go make those changes in a day that I get some kind of additional feedback or my pull request is merged within a day or two. Right. And some some sort of attention so that who, uh, that it's been submitted and that people are looking it? at it, right? Uh, yeah, who does it doesn't really matter to me because I like some projects just have multiple maintainers. So it so it really does become almost a time to first response. Well it's it's like a repeating time to first response sometimes. John, you're muted. Thanks. It's basically time to response. You can count the first one or you can mm -hmm. count the times to the other responses as well. So and keep in mind, we've defined a review cycle as uh, until changes are made, I believe. So a or review cycle point. only only accounts for the comment period and then changes are made and then a new review cycle begins. And at some point, a review cycle ends with either the pull request being merged or right. closed. Yeah. So, so changes changes made ends the review cycle, though. Changes made and re-reviewed ends the review cycle. Doesn't uh, it? Or no, no, no I think according no. to the way we have it defined, okay. changes right. made begins a new review cycle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. That's this. That's 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 zero. Patient zero. Time zero. I've made the changes now. The clock resets. It's like the shot clock. So where are we at? <laughs> I'm I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm not either. And the more I look at these filters, based on what we just discussed, I'm not sure that any of them make sense. Well, date and time, the change, the date and time, I suppose. Um, I, I but think like, we can get rid of this one, and then it makes sense. Just a subset of a review uh, cycle duration. But I don't think like number of people involved, if it's time, so we're talking about time waiting for a yep. reviewer action. So, so yep. that's always gonna be one person involved because we're talking about a single action. Yep. And the same thing with comments. Like I feel like number of people involved and number of comments make more sense when you're talking about a review cycle and not so mm -hmm. much when you're talking about time waiting for a single yep. action. And I think like date and time is probably not of the, the change request was submitted, but the, well. Change request submitted or modified. You, we need both the times. We need the time that it was submitted yeah. and then we also need the time of the response. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking was the time of the response, but you're right, we do need both. I'm sorry, I should be suggesting. I don't know if you can read that, but I think what we're describing is I open a pull request and I go through this cycle of it being reviewed and changes requested. 
I make the changes. And then it basically goes back to the submit state and gets reviewed again until at some point it's either closed or merged. And the, what we're discussing are the cycles, each cycle, each of the iterations of the change submitted, change reviewed process that might occur. Uh, so we're not, I don't think we're, we're not discussing the cycles at all. We're discussing the individual reviewer action within the cycle, right? Because right. the, the other, the other um, metric yeah. describes the cycles. There could be, yeah, I, I guess this disguise, this, this would measure each iteration. Right. Like each review iteration, this is what that's measured. This is what's getting measured here, isn't it? I think it's the time waiting for reviewer action within a review cycle, which would be the the iteration, right? Yep, that's it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. That's, yes, I'm, yes. So I I just took an attempt at drastically simplifying the um, filters by getting rid of. Frankly, most of them. Um, Sometimes that's better. <laughs> so basically, left it with. Um, actually, I don't know that this one is applicable either. The change request type and size, because we're talking about time. We're talking about time waiting. Yep. Oh no, I think that makes sense. Because if it's a big, if it's a yep. big change, then that's going to take longer. Okay, I, I get that one. Um, so I, I changed these to just like uh, I added reviewer type because we might care about um, the type mm. of the you know the role that they have in the project, which varies a lot by project. And then I left just like the the date and time ones, date and time that the original thing was submitted, and then the date and time of the response. Uh, maybe we be more explicit in saying type and size may affect the response time. Mm, yeah. State that as a piece of information and as opposed to something we're going to try to measure. Yep. Well, this is just filters, right? Yeah. All right, this is better. Yeah, definitely. No, I think we probably need to go back and re rewrite some of the, the other bits after this discussion. I think the question's good. I feel like this whole section is confusing because it talks mostly about the review cycles. Yeah, which I, no longer has relevance. <laughs> Yeah. I agree. And that was actually the, the comment that I had made first. <laughs> oh, sorry. I must not, I must not have seen your comment. Fair oh, enough. no, I, I had uh, I'd said it out loud. Oh, okay. Yes, that comment is what led us down this harrowing road to simplification. I think this seems pretty good. Yeah. If we get, if we get rid of the stuff above it. I'll just do that and make that suggestion. And then we and we just link to review cycle down here. Yeah. Uh, which was I think it's this one here. I'll just grab it. Small yeah. question. Is it time waiting for reviewer action or time waiting for a reviewer action? I would say A, because I think that's more specific, A reviewer action. Okay. Oops. Competing updates. I think this is good, the objectives. Me too. Um, 
I feel like we made a lot of progress on this metric today. Yeah, hey. I, yeah, I do too. It's simple, it's much. This is this, this is this is good work for now. We just needed to work through the the language a little bit. So, how about if we give you the action? Um, do we want to bring this back in one more time so, and look at it? Yeah, or? yeah. One more question before we okay. close this, maybe. Oh, sure. uh, do we have any visuals or tools supporting this? The like, review uh, site, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, which okay, the new version of it is is simply um, time waiting for reviewer action. Yeah, we do. So maybe you, can you provide a visual for that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe a maybe a picture of a maintainer doing something other than reviewing. <laughs> Retainer on the beach with a mai tai instead of reviewing the All right, yes. yeah. I don't think I, I, I have a I have a JSON file, but I can make a visualization from that with relative ease. Okay. So, okay. Time um, for reviewer action. And I'm uh, so Sean. So here's the action items I've got. Uh, Vinod's going to resolve the comments, bring it back for a quick review in the next meeting. I think we can get there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Sean to provide a visualization. And yep. not check with um uh, Grim Grim yeah. yeah yeah i'll do that and maybe maybe do a quick read through on that other metric just to make sure yep we're using similar language and yes i have that goal because the synonym got t so i have to adjust in the other metric so sorry what, what was the other metrics name so i can capture it in the uh, uh, time waiting for submitter action uh, uh, review cycle duration within a change request. No, uh, the other metric which was ready for release based on this one was time waiting for a submitter action. Oh, and I, I was recommending looking at the uh, review cycle metric. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Because this is a uh, yeah. this metric is a metric that exists within the review cycle metric, so we need to make sure that we're using similar language. Okay. Yeah, so many action items. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're quick ones. I think they're quick ones. Yeah. That's never going to come back to a meeting again. <laughs> <laughs> so just a note, maybe onwards, like I'll always join, but I might get five or seven minutes late because on Thursdays I try to come to campus and my bus reaches me uh, at 10, so it takes five minutes to get my laptop on and join the meeting. No, so I'll join. OK. Perfect. And for me, it just depends how quickly my class that gets out at 9.15 stops wanting to talk. <laughs> okay. It's the end of the semester. Wow. So those are by the time we get to the next meeting, the semester will be over. So. So let's just have a quick look at the agenda for next week. So we'll do. Um, do sort of our standard things um plus reviewing the old metrics so hopefully sean will have something i will have next something week. absolutely um i feel like we talked about issue labels we probably don't need that again is there anything else we need to talk about for next week or two weeks which will be as i look at the dates the 12th Okay, no. cool. With that, I think we're I think we're in good shape for the meeting. Unless anybody yeah. has anything else you want to talk about. All good. I'm All good. Right. All right. Well, thanks everybody. All this right. was, this yeah. was a good meeting. Thank you all. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Excuse me.